Hello, folks. My name is Julius, and I'm a self-managed support engineer here at GitLab. Today, I'm going to do a demonstration on how to configure a GitLab runner at the project level, how to configure a shared GitLab runner. We will look at the main configuration file and basic settings in the GitLab instance for the runner. And finally, I'll demonstrate on how to run GitLab runner in debug mode and remove the GitLab runner from GitLab altogether. This tutorial assumes that you have GitLab runner already installed and running. So first, we're gonna set up a shared GitLab runner. We're gonna to go to our instance, admin, uh, runners, and we have a section set up a shared runner manually. So I'm gonna copy the URL, and I'm gonna SSH into my GitLab runner machine. Just get the IP address. Okay, I'm gonna check where the runner is running. It's not running, I'm just gonna start, although it's not necessary. Okay, I'm gonna go back and copy the URL again. Now I'm gonna register the runner, GitLab dash runner space register. I'm gonna paste the CI coordinator URL that I just copied. I'm gonna copy registration token. Paste it in, GitLab CI description. I'm just gonna call it Julius Runner. Uh, please enter the GitLab CI tags. I'm just gonna call it, give it a tag Ruby. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now please enter the executor. I'm just gonna enter Docker. Uh, note that if you want to use Docker executor, you have to have Docker installed on the machine. The default Docker image, I'm gonna use Ruby 2.5. Now I go back to admin runners page, refresh, and we have runner registered. Now I'm gonna remove it for now. Clear the terminal, and I'm gonna remove the configuration file just to avoid any confusion. Now I'm gonna set up a specific GitLab runner for the project. So I'm gonna go back to my GitLab instance, go to the main project page, access the, the GitLab project, go uh, settings, CI, CD, runners, and we have a section for a specific runners right here. So I'm gonna copy the URL again. I'm gonna type GitLab runner register, paste the URL. Copy the registration token, paste it in. Okay, now I'm gonna give a name, Julius Runner. Tags, I'm gonna give the same, Ruby. Executor, I'm gonna give Docker. Oh, made a typo. Docker and the file image, Ruby 2.5. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this page now, refresh, expand the runner section again. And I can see that the runner was added, but it's not showing as healthy yet. Let's try to refresh. Okay, it's showing as healthy now. So now let's look at the basic uh, settings of the GitLab runner. If I click this link here, it brings me to the runner settings page. Also, I can go to admin, runners, and just click edit. And I see a few options here that I can set up. I can set up uh, for the runner that is paused not to accept the new jobs. In order to pause the runner, you can go back to the runners page and click pause here. Let's go back to the settings page. Um, then I can enable this runner to only run the pipelines triggered on protected branches. Then I can uh, enable this runner that ticket it can pick up jobs without the tags. If you don't specify a tag in the job, and I can lock this runner to a specific project that is assigned to. So if you go to the bottom of this page, you see that there are projects assigned to this runner here. So if I enable this and save, it will only run for these projects. Also, I have an IP address of the runner, the description that I specify when I register the runner, maximum job timeout that I can give for the job to timeout, and tags, the one I gave when I registered the runner as well as Ruby. So now let's have a look at the 
GitLab run a main configuration file, which is located Etsy, GitLab runner, config.toml. And we have a few options here I'm gonna go through now. So concurrent one, this limits how many jobs globally can be run concurrently. So this is set to one, check interval. Check interval defines the interval length in seconds between new jobs check. Uh, session server section, session timeout. Session timeout uh, defines how long in seconds in session can stay active after the job completes. And now in the runner section, we have a name that is specified during the runner registration. We have a GitLab URL. We have a token that's been generated when I, when I gave a registration token when registering this runner. And we have an executor as Docker. Also, we can specify runner's custom build directory right here. And we have a runner's Docker section as well. So we have a TLS verifier which means enable or disable TLS verification of connections to Docker daemon. We have an image, which I gave Ruby 2.5, privileged mode. This tells uh, GitLab to uh, make container run in privileged mode, which is insecure. We also have an option to disable the image entry point overriding. And we have an option to disable uh, out of memory killer. It, if this is enabled, it does not kill processes in the container if an out of memory error occurs. We can also disable cache and specify additional volumes that should be mounted right here. And the share memory size option, it specifies share memory size for the images. Uh, this is measured in bytes. And we also have a runner's cache section where we can specify whether the cache should be stored on AWS S3 or Google Cloud Storage. So I'm gonna show you just quickly how to run a GitLab run in a debug mode in order to troubleshoot any issues that you're having. So I'm gonna stop it and now I'm gonna run GitLab runner dash dash debug run. Now this loads a um, configuration from the config.toml file and also we can see that it's checking for jobs from GitLab. If you have any issues with the runner, the errors should appear here. And now lastly, I'm just gonna show you how to remove the runner from the project that we assigned to. It's quite simple, you just go to the project, settings, CI, CD, runners, expand the section and remove the runner, okay? And that's it. Thank you for watching and have a good day.